Hi again, everyone. This is the third part to the series. Um, so congratulations, you applied, you got an interview. That's amazing. Uh, interviews are always a great indication about how successful you are as a candidate. It shows that the employer has a lot of interest in you as a candidate and in having you join their team. So you're already halfway there, so you should be very proud of yourself for making it to this step on its own. Um, the way that we're going to structure this is we're going to have a sample mock interview and I'll give tips and tricks as we go along and then at the end we'll have general do's and don'ts for the interview. So moving into that, um, imagining that Ramija and I are in an interview, me being the employer, Ramija being the candidate, um, it would normally start off again virtual interview. Hi Ramija, how are you? How are you doing? Hi Sarah, I'm good. How are you? How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for asking. Um, as a side note, this would also be a really good place to have a little bit of small talk just so the employer will get to know you a little bit better. Um, they'll also get to know you beyond your interview answers and it shows them how well you'll gel into their team. So as a tip, that's always a great idea. The first question that you'll normally hear in an interview is, tell me about yourself. So, um, well, everything you need to know about me should be included in my resume, but I guess I could highlight um, a few key aspects. Um, I'm a third year pre-law student at ABC University. Um, I am planning on working towards my JD, but it is a really long educational commitment. So I guess we'll, we'll see where things go um, mm -hmm. as it is quite competitive. Um, other than that, um, what really interested me in law was um, watching crime dramas growing up. Um, those were really fun and interesting. I know they're just um, like a glorified version of what law really is, um, but it really did give me a great um, idea of what um, I really want to do, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, um, in terms of my um, work ethic, um, I'm a really independent uh, worker. I like doing my own tasks by myself. Um, I'm not really a people person, but in the events that I do have to work with teams, um, I do work really collaboratively and cooperatively, cooperatively so that works. Um, and in terms of my experience, um, I've been here and there, nothing too fancy. Um, I'm just looking for somewhere that um, I get to test out my experience and my skills and um, really see if this is what I like and this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Awesome. So that was a great first go at it. Um, there was a lot of really good points about what Ramija did in her answer. So for example, she connected this position, which we're assuming is in law, to something very personal to her. So for example, crime shows and dramas growing up. Um, so that gives an employer a sense of like the passion that she has for law. Um, so that is something that you could borrow from this. Of course, making sure that that answer is professional and refined and qualified. But at the end of the day, that was a really good thing that she did. In terms of tips and tricks, this question should be a very good introduction to who you are. So for the tell me about yourself question, it shouldn't be too long. It should be short, sweet, concise. This is a high level overview about what makes me, me. And I like to take it almost like a story. So start off with, you know, this is a little bit about who I am, what I'm studying, what I do outside of, you know, outside of school, then kind of connect it back to the position. Why am I interested in law? Why am I interested in your position? And then kind of take it with next steps. This is why I'm interested in this position at this job specifically. And that is a very good segue into the rest of the interview. Um, the other tip is within this question, you never want to discredit yourself. So don't bring up any weaknesses you have. Don't bring up, you know, I don't have a lot of experience. This is a great place to sell yourself. And so you want to focus on that rather than focusing on any weaknesses you might have or any lack of experience. Um, so that is that is another indicator, another tip to, to keep in mind. Um, the next question would be, what do you know about our company and our organization and why are you interested in this position? Um, so I actually stumbled upon one of your hiring posts on 
uh, LinkedIn. And honestly, I've never heard of the organization before, but I decided to check it out because why not? Mm -hmm. um, and I saw some of the things um, you guys offer um, and some programs you guys do, which I thought were pretty cool. Um, I didn't completely understand it, but I'm a firm believer in learning as I go. Um, so I thought it wouldn't hurt to apply. Um, uh, like I said, I just wanted some beginner level experience. So um, I thought this would be a great chance and a great place to start. Yeah. So in this question, again, Ramija did a lot of really good. She had a lot of really good aspects of her answer. So, for example, one really good thing that she did mention was she talked about exactly where she heard about the company um, and where she heard about our organization. And she tied that back in. So that was good because it gives the employer an idea of, you know, where their reach is and what information ha she has access to. Um, as a general note, this question is a great place to showcase research that you've done and to show the employer that I know what you do and I will be a great fit here. Um, so this is always an amazing place to focus on that. I would have liked or I would suggest to Ramija to, she talked a little bit about the services that we offer, reading up about those services and listing out some and maybe giving a few examples and connecting that back to why she, it interests her. So for example, if this was a question I was in, I might say I'm very interested in you know, mentoring. And I know Lawyered has a mentoring service. And so that is something that kind of drew me in more. That might be a very good statement that you can re use and reuse. Um, with that being said, another really key aspect is focusing on your passion. You really want to communicate why you're passionate about this position. And that's incredibly important in this question. So having a statement like, I really want beginner experience. Great to mention um, because of course everyone does want experience but have that as a secondary supplementary statement after you talk about why you want this position and, and where that passion comes from. Passion is always a lot more appreciated than just having experience. Personally I will always look for passion in any candidates that I'm interviewing over experience. Um, the next question would be, how do you manage the stress of a tight deadline? Um, usually, um, I always put all my reminders on my phone because I'm constantly on it anyway, so I'll eventually see it. Mm -hmm. um, I try to prioritize most of my uh, tasks and projects, um, but honestly, I know procrastination is sort of in inevitable, so I wouldn't beat myself up too much about it um, mm -hmm. if I don't follow through. Um, I work really well under pressure, so that kind of helps. Um, I know regardless of how many tasks I do, I'll eventually get the work done by the deadline and get it to um, whoever it needs to be done for us soon as possible. Yeah. So again, the last part of Ramija's answer was amazing. And of course, it can be reworded. But it, the general idea that she was kind of communicating there was great. I will get the work done. I work well under pressure. Tight deadlines won't affect my quality of work and I'll meet any deliverables. That's exactly what you want to communicate. Now, breaking her answer down a little bit more, you know, having reminders on your phone, Great idea. You might not want to mention that you are on your phone. Um, so again, in this answer, make sure you're focusing on positive qualities in a candidate. Same thing with procrastination. Consider whether that is something an employer will value in a candidate and then consider whether you'll bring it up in an interview. Um, other sample answer answers that you could give here are, you know, using a calendar, using an agenda, writing to do lists. Those are all this is an answer that where employers really want to see you hone in on your organizational skills along with your time management skills. So consider and reflect within yourselves, what do I do to organize myself? What do I do to manage my time? And then structure your answer that way. But again, make sure that your answers are very positive, very much answers that will sell you as a candidate and will make the employer be like, that's someone I want on my team. Um, as another question, I will ask maybe two more. Um, what would be your favorite and your least favorite part about your last job? Um, my favorite part about my last job um, was having the ability to witness ongoing cases. Um, like I said, I'm really passionate about um, law, especially um, in the field that I have built my last position in. So mm -hmm. it was really interesting to see live cases because often 
when I, within my studies, I was only able to have access to past and um, completed cases. Whereas mm -hmm. this one, um, I got to actually see the people involved in it, attend trials and such like that. Um, in terms of least favorite, I would say it was part of the paperwork. It definitely was not as exciting as being involved in a trial. Yeah. So this is a little bit of a trick question <laughs> um, because, of course, your favorite part of your job, she answered that perfectly. And you can tell she's very passionate about law through her answer. It was amazing. But you never want to really give a least favorite part of a job. Just because, again, if I'm an employer and I'm sitting here and I haven't disclosed to Ramija that her position does have a fair amount of paperwork. It's in the job responsibilities, but that is something that's almost on an ad hoc basis. Immediately, that would be like red flag. She doesn't like paperwork. Versus, on the other hand, if you were looking at a least favorite part of a job, you could focus more on something external. So an example of something that could be mentioned is, for example, um, with the pandemic, I really like being in person. And so that would be my least favorite part about my last job. As much as, you know, I can thrive online and get my work done, that's great. I do have a very, I'm a very much a social butterfly. So I like meeting my peers. Hopefully when we go back to the office, that's something that we can build on. And my organization is doing X, Y, Z to kind of mitigate that. So I don't really feel it as much, but that would be a sample example. So focusing on the external and kind of building off of that. Um, the next question would be if you were pitching an idea to your coworkers and not all of them agreed, how would you handle that situation? Um, I would probably ask my coworkers what was the reason, um, like what prompted them to not agree, and if there's anything um, that they'd suggest we do instead. Um, I am open to a lot of opinions. I'm usually um, I'm really usually lenient when it comes to ideas, um, but I would want to see like what was the reason for them to not accept mine so I can work on um, myself in terms of the ideas that I give so it can apply to everybody's interests and likings. Yeah, perfect. So that was a great start. Building out that answer a little bit more would be the only tip I have there. So she mentioned that she's open to other people's ideas. She's open to working on it. That's amazing. How will you do that? So maybe you could say, I'll you know, schedule a meeting, have a conversation with them. We'll walk through what everyone feels about it and then we'll make an idea together. So we'll collaborate and we'll come up with a refined proposal that incorporates all of the feedback I received. And that would be a very good end to the answer that she already gave. But that was already very well done. So well done, Anisha. Um, The last question, which you'll get at the end of almost any interview is, do you have any questions for us? So, um, I don't really have any questions for you. I think I should be able to find everything I need to know on your website. Awesome. So that's an answer which is not necessarily wrong, but an employer does want to hear. A, it is always good to have questions for the employer at the end. Just to remember that an interview isn't so much just the employer deciding whether you're the right fit for them. It's also a chance for you to decide whether this is a good place for you to work. It's a two-way street. This is a call where you also get to, you know, ask the employer any questions you have. Um, this question, these questions would also be a really good place to re-emphasize your passion, to bring up any research that you've done, or to clarify anything that was you're unsure about through the job description. So for example, sample questions you could ask are, I read about this on your website. Could you explain this a little bit more? Or, um, you know, what is your favorite part of the job? What is something that you do? Could you explain to me the day-to-day -day work that you would do on the job? Those are sample questions that you could ask. There are a lot of resources online that will give you a bunch of really great, valuable questions you could ask the employer at the end, but you do want to have one or two prepared just so that you're ready to go. Um, overall, at the end of the interview, making sure you're thanking the employer for their time, having a good end, making sure that you know, you're leaving off on a good note and then exiting the call professionally. In terms of general do's and don'ts, make sure that you're, you know, professional, you're dressed professionally, you're like presenting yourself in a way that is very prof professional. Um, it's okay. Very professional and, you know, showing that you're interested in being there, engaged in being there, having a smile, a good tone of voice, 
projecting yourself and, you know, not speaking too quietly. Um, so generally making sure your body language is emphasizing and really validating the fact that I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be talking to you and I'm very excited about the opportunity. Awesome. So that's the end of this segment. Um, we hope you have a good rest of your days and we hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us and we're happy to help. Um, but yeah, bye. Have a good day.